Hello, and welcome to Bright Talk Blockchain Summit. My name is David Smith. I'm the president of Micromation, and I'm the presenter for today's session, Supply Chain Transparency, Solving Real Problems with Digital Storytelling. If you have any questions during the session, please type them into the chat box, and I'll refer to them at the end of the session, time permitting. The session is being recorded and will be made available for your reference. You know, one of the things that COVID-19 pandemic taught us is, is that our supply chains are pretty fragile. They say that hindsight is 2020, but in a lot of cases, I kept hearing the expression, you know, who saw that coming? And just to think over some of my own personal experiences, I saw things like shutdowns in like the food industry, which resulted in supplies being in the wrong place. Since the restaurants were not opening, then a lot of the food in supply chains like meat, et cetera, were no longer available to be sold. And then people had to either waste it or get rid of it. So there's a scramble to, you know, reposition or move things around very quickly, but it was very difficult to do so because no one knew really or had visibility where food items were. We also saw, you know, people being locked down. And as a result of that, behavior shifted from, uh, you know, not being able to go out and do things to ordering things online. And as a result of that, we saw a lot of money being poured into things like renovations and in their homes and gardening products, which this ended up depleting inventories. And then you just, you just couldn't get anything anymore because there, there were none to be had. We also saw housing market disruption. Uh, I don't know in your area, but certainly where I live, we saw a lot of migration from the larger cities to the rural areas, which I live in a rural area. And therefore, a lot of our housing got snapped up and caused a pricing bubble. And in addition to that, uh, the trade laborers who are actually doing renovations, uh, they became, there were shortages in labor as well. So they were very busy uh, to their credit and, and fortune. But, um, this also caused, uh, you know, domino effect into other areas. So as an example, recently, my wife and I had a new house build that we were just to embark on. And we went through all of the steps to get our permits and everything. And at the last minute, we had to put our housing project on hold as well, because there were, there were lumber shortages. And, and it wasn't so much that there wasn't lumber because they kind of caught up there. But the stores had now huge inventories of lumber that they had purchased at previously high prices and they had to wait for those to be to, you know reduced to get to the lower prices but in addition to that were there other non-obvious things that were also missing like there were shortages in glue so not having glue you couldn't make things like trusses and trusses are needed for you know roofs of, of the houses and it, an end result was the prices were so high that uh we we just put the project on hold waiting for it to get back under control uh even as <laughs> i went and, and i bought a used truck i had always wanted uh a, a, a truck to help with our, our our uh house project and you know there was chip shortages so chips computer chips were in high demand and Therefore, uh, you couldn't get them. So the new, there, there were less new trucks and therefore the price of used trucks uh, almost had to pay full price. So, you know, these are the side effects and, and the cause and effect things that happen because we, we don't have good visibility or transparency into the supply chains. Now, what do I mean by transparency? Well, not by able to see who has what, where, when you need it and why there may be a deficiency or a backlog it makes it very difficult for things to flow and get caught up and we're still kind of in that um constraint right now where our supply chains uh, you, you might have noticed that there's all kinds of ships trying to get into ports but all of that is congested and backlogged so uh finding out where things are and being able to trace them has become very very difficult um you know, in our supply chains. So what is this story about? Well, I also work with a company called VeChain. VeChain is a blockchain company that provides blockchain as a service, and they specialize in supply chain traceability.
I've worked with them for a year and a half now, and I am Micromation is a VeChain implementation partner. And as a result of that, over the last year and a half, I got to talk with dozens of companies and you know to hear what their challenges were, what they were trying to overcome and some of the issues that they had in their supply chains. So this session is really to share with you what I learned in speaking with them and how we worked with them to use smart traceability solutions to help deal with real world tracking of products and not only products but services as well so let's let's get started so the session is going to take you know approximately 30 to 45 minutes and going through this i'm going to share with you the method that we uh not only the problems but the methods that we use to uh sift through and, and get to the root cause and then to look at specific themes around provenance anti-counterfeiting uh, dealing with traceability for safety, uh, compliance and sustainability issues, and then even logistics things where you have to track things uh, like on a cold chain or or keeping it at, at a specific temperature uh, or humidity. So let's get into, you know, what what is the problem? And what I found was in working with the different companies that, that it, it isn't as straightforward because there's companies that deal with products or physical things, but there's also uh, a service aspect for this as well. People that don't make products, but they maybe move them or the logistics aspect. And then you have the consumer and the consumer could be the end consumer. But if you think about it, there's usually many uh, actors or parties throughout an entire supply chain. And each one of those is in effect a consumer or, or customer as well. And so maybe you have raw materials that are purchased by a manufacturer. The manufacturer in this context is a customer and they're buying goods from the raw materials wherever they came from, but they may rely on other service providers to be able to move those goods to where they need them on, on a certain time frame. And so these are different perspectives that you have to look at in terms of whether you're obtaining goods or you're, you're, you're reliant on services and who is the customer in the circumstance. So that's the one, uh, you know, context that you have to get in your mind. The other one is the notion of traceability because traceability has this thought of upstream, meaning where did things come from? You know, what was the source? And then there's, downstream and that's where did where did it go after that so it's being able to look upstream and find out where did things come from and what was the provenance and lineage of where the raw materials came from and what were the ingredients and then after we you know obtain those and we add value or we make a product then we look at well where did it go after it left us because there are other you know supply chain uh parties that are involved and being able to see uh more than one party beside me and, and be able to see you know maybe three layers up or five layers down uh upstream downstream th this is also what we mean by having transparency and be able to see not only from the perspective of who's involved but you know how far upstream or downstream do we need to take a look so if i break it down that way then i can start to put these problems more in perspective as to who had what kind of problem and was it an upstream or a downstream issue and these are are kind of like the the themes and issues that i saw somewhat repeatedly in in, in some states and, and and you'll notice that i've I sort of ordered them in the ones that are at the top that are the ones that i heard more often so when you're dealing with goods or product supply chains upstream supplier issues tended to be like you know is this the real product or is somebody substituting or counterfeiting it and that's where we get into the notion of gray markets and i heard things that like in certain spaces like in cannabis if you make a new cannabis product it could be counterfeited within 30 days of you launching it so you know those counterfeited products can eat up your uh opportunity to you know, make, make a profit or, or get your market to product because somebody else is stealing your ideas and, and uh, you know, basically taking your hard work and, and profiting from it. 
There's also the notion of no single source of truth across suppliers. Most suppliers don't connect their systems and they're all independently like silos. So each you know supplier that is involved in a value chain often have their own systems. They don't talk to one another. So this gives us the uh, issue of they're not interoperable. And as a result of that, each supplier is like re-entering data into their own system, which is like a, a little island of data. And as a result of that, they're error prone because, uh, you know, humans type things in, we fat finger things and we make mistakes. And often those errors get injected in there and then they can follow the product and, and compound and get into bigger issues. So, so that causes a, an issue where you end up having to do rework. You also get into questions of, you know, am, am I really getting the quality and, you know, I want value for money, but am I really getting it? Because you, you don't know kind of sometimes what are the ingredients and can I trust the, you know, where these came from and was it counterfeited? And this leads to, you know, who can I trust? And without having visibility of information or, or no those kinds of details, we, we have doubts whether we can really trust those other parties. So these are kind of the issues that I, I heard in, in a goods and products space. Now on the downstream, they had other concerns as well. Like after they made the product and they sent it now to somebody else to move it or send it to a distribution network or uh, retail, you know, how was that product handled? You know, if it was say um, peaches or, you know, grapes or something that was very sensitive to the temperature and whether you, you know, mishandled it in terms of dropping it or, or whatever, it could bruise things. And so depending on how many people uh, touched it, and this is the notion of chain of custody, you know, if something did go wrong, how do you, how do you know who did it or, or who, who made the mistake or where the, where the, where the fault happened. We also need to be concerned with shelf life. Some things, you know, have a shelf life and they only last so long. And so if, um, if we have no visibility and can't see where things are sitting and if they sit for too long, and now we've got a problem where, geez, we need to get those products quickly on the shelf or they're going to, um, you know, go, go bad. So, so those are other problems that we had downstream and then knowing who was involved in moving things in the chain of custody and what would happen if we did have to do a recall because maybe something did get contaminated or we had to, um, you know, get it back and we needed to, to, to find out, well, who, who had it last? Where is it? Where did it come from? Because in a lot of cases, if you don't have those answers, you can unfortunately have to destroy like entire batches or uh large amounts of food as an example uh, if you can't trace specifically where contamination came from and if there are errors in the system you know there is issues are that you had to rework things so you know you know had the thing throw products out or send them back you had to double handle them this causes more friction and waste and rework which costs money and also when you have many parties working together uh and and we're all working in silos the notion of inventory tracking where are things becomes very very difficult as well so knowing where those inventories are uh when you need them and and, and being able to track them it is very difficult when you have multi-vendors or multi-suppliers working together in a chain now switching gears a little bit and talking about it more from a service delivery perspective now, their issues are similar, but slightly different. First of all, upstream, uh, often it's very difficult for customers or consumers of, of your service to even understand what it is that you do for them because a service isn't intangible, it's invisible. And so oftentimes, you know, they, they, you know, people don't understand what it takes to actually move things or why things cost so much. So, you, you know, the inability to see what was really happening is, is a, an issue with um, transparency. So therefore that moves into managing customer expectations. If people don't know that you're doing something special to make, you know, this delivery work, um, or maybe they have a higher expectation than what they're really getting, uh, the, the whole aspect of managing customer ex ex expectations can be difficult.
And then you also sometimes have to rely on other partners. And if your systems are not operable or interoperable together, again, that's where handoffs and um, errors can happen in the chain of communications, because usually it's communications is the big, um, you know, uh, flaw with partners working together in a, in a delivery supply chain. And then if you've never worked with some of the service partners before, knowing what their availability or whether they're reliable and that they have integrity in dealing with issues and that they provide, you know, quality service. These can be somewhat unknown as well if you if you don't have visibility into their past and how they work with customers. So these are some of the issues upstream that that um, in a service delivery supply chain that you have to be concerned with. On the downstream, then you're you're more thinking about who your customer is and what experience they got with your uh, services that you are delivering. And often, if you don't have uh, a good way of communicating with your customer then uh, there's continual um, need for updates. You know, where are we? And, and updates can be labor intensive and, and, and often manual because you're, you're either on the phone or answering an email or, or a text. And so there's a, a lot of, um, of uh, time spent in, in keeping those updates and that, it, that communication going. And this may also result in having to track a lot of administrative and documentation. So sometimes if we're delivering services, and especially if you're going cross borders, there's, uh, you know, bills of lading and, and customs forms and, and other documentation that needs to go with the, the service or the product that you're moving in, in proof of where things came from and to be able to track, you know, tariffs and, and taxes and things of that nature. So that can be also labor intensive. And then actually getting the invoices out can be slow because now you got to go back and check. Did you get what you, the service that you expected and, um, you know, is everything closed off and are you happy and did the, all the administrative work and, and all that, you know, uh, documentation happen. So we, we heard a lot about, you know, the invoicing process is, is slow and labor intensive a, a, as well, which again, eats up your, your ability to be successful and profitable. And then the third kind of um, perspective is the consumer or the customer's perspective. And the kind of way that they would look at it is sort of before purchase and after purchase of the service or the good uh, product in this case. And so before purchase, some of the issues that they had is sometimes, you know, some offerings can be complicated and, and it's tough for them to make a choice because choices are confusing if they don't have visibility or transparency. So, um, you know, it's guesswork. And, and a lot of times some products like, um, you know, cell phone or uh, mobile plans, or um, so sometimes some of the cannabis products or even wine or, or um, some of the quality wines, you know, it's difficult to make a choice because you need to be educated to understand it, what it is that you're getting and what you're buying. And so as part of this, you you have to trust who you're getting the the product from and the information that you're getting and if you have a lack of information then then you're not consumers not sure whether they can trust what they're getting now on the flip side there's also a safety uh aspect from a consumer's perspective you know what if i buy things and end up getting sick or you know it was contaminated or it was bad or it was toxic um Maybe I have allergies or, you know, I'm, I'm allergic to peanuts or, or things of that nature. So I need to know what the ingredients are. And if, if I don't have that visibility, then, then I'm kind of taking, you know, you know, a little bit of risk on my part. And so then they help, uh, worry about, well, am I really getting, you know, the product that you said that you're selling me or, you know, is this a counterfeit? Am I getting, you know, value for money? So these are the kinds of things that are kind of consumer is thinking about and with the lack of transparency or visibility it becomes you know difficult for them for them to make you know the good decisions after purchase and, the, and now they have your service or your the goods that they procured from you then it comes down to you know the experience versus what they expected they were getting you know it, it, this is all to do with expectation management i thought i was getting this but i got something different or you told me that that, you know, I was getting this level of service, but, you know, I didn't experience that. Then there's the ease of use. 
you know, how difficult is it to, you know, use your product and, you know, do I need additional education to be able to use it? And then if I do have an issue, you know, how do I get service or support and how easy or hard is that? And if there is a warranty or a guarantee that's involved in something, you know, how do I, uh, you know, activate that? So these are the, the, the other things that, that a consumer, you know, had to, um, you know, deal with and the types of issues that they came up with. So this is kind of like, a, you know, a summary of, of the kinds of issues that I've been hearing now for a year and a half, you know, from various um, either product providers, service providers, or even from the customer's concept. And so how we deal with those is uh, we get into what we call digital storytelling. And that is, wouldn't it be great if you could solve a lot of those issues by giving the information that people need when they need it and, and make placing it at their fingertips? And how we do that is, is that we've got a service that we put together called True Storyteller. And that is a way that you can actually, um, you know, tell the story of the product from its uh, origin and its lineage and where its provenance and where things came from and who handled it. So the, the whole idea is that for each product or service that you obtain, that you give the consumer the ability to have insight as to where did it come from? Uh, what was, what was it made of? Who made it? Why, you know, things work the way that they do. What do I do if I have an issue? And, and that we build into a method called digital storytelling. And there's a number of themes that you could um, put in place. And these are now becoming pretty well known and understood um, methods of, of um, types of information that you need to deal with and, and have in place. So some themes that, that we see quite common are the ability to tell where products provenance and, and its traceability, you know, where did it come from? What was its lineage? And is it authentic? And this is to, you know, deal with the notion of anti-counterfeiting and, and trying to block that out, making sure that it is a, an original product. So um, that's one form of storytelling is making the product traceable by using things like blockchains and cryptology and, even tracking chips that you can put into products that, that tell the story of where the chip came from. And in addition to that, um, and related is the notion of food safety by, you know, providing that transparency to know that, you know, things are compliant, that it meets a certain standard, that if there are recalls that you can trace it back and uh, understand and see, you know, who handled the product and as a result of this, you know, increase the level of trust and relationship that consumers have with the supply chain. There's other themes that are similar, but uh, slightly different and, and all around brand protection. So sometimes um, you, people don't know what your story is. So they don't know what makes you special or that, you know, there's things that you do that have a higher quality. So you need to be able to tell your consumers that side of it as well and and be able to show how you're different than you know people that are trying to compete in your space sometimes you might have sophisticated products so maybe you need to educate your consumer on how to use your product or the service and what other related issues or problems you can solve with smart labeling and uh, putting labels or barcodes or QR codes on your product to be able to make it easier to use the products. Sometimes your products might be controlled. So maybe it's a pharmaceutical product or a hazardous material, or maybe you're having to track things very rigorously because you're doing research and development, or maybe you're doing clinical trials and you need to know exactly where something came from. So you can determine what the efficacy is of a particular product. Or maybe it just needs to be a product that is uh, delivered under certain conditions. A good example of this is even the, um, the vaccines that are being used for COVID. They need to be at a certain temperature and uh, they have, they get, they've got to be shipped, you know, in some of them, you know, at minus 180 degrees, like, and, and make sure that they don't get over a certain uh, threshold of temperature or they'll 
spoil. And, and so these are the types of things that controlled substances need to, um, you need to be able to verify that they were within those standards. Other things, um, sustainability and uh, ESG, environmental, social and governance reporting is becoming very important. You know, it, it's, it's um, everybody is now really focused on, on their, uh, you, the, the behavior that you have and, and helping with um, the climate and, and protecting the earth. So tracking where things came from and uh, recycling and um, making sure that you're environmentally um, doing the right things and, and proving it and showing what you've done is important. Maybe your products have warranties of, you know, or guarantees. So being able to make it easier for people to place warranties and have the maintenance records of your equipment. And then other digital storytelling themes are all in the, in the fun and game space. So gamifying your products with offering maybe incentives or prizes or treasure hunting or maybe you've got coupons or special privileges or maybe even exclusive content like backstage packs passes that you would like to issue so so these are different ways in which uh now tracking your products using digital storytelling gives you uh, a, a completely different way of knowing where things came from and for different purposes and different examples of value chains that they can be applied to and i've got a list here and this is not an end all or be all list but ones that we deal with on a regular basis are you know clothing and luxury items making sure that you know there's traceability on them cannabis and pharmaceutical products um because in a lot of cases they are are controlled substances you've got collectibles and art you've probably heard a lot about non-fungible tokens and NFTs is, is, is the acronym for that. Uh, certainly food and beverage, fresh, fresh produce, uh, fresh seafood and meat, uh, lab specimens and the logistics of moving things around like organs and uh, vaccines, uh, asset life cycles, you know, tracking the life cycle of, um, of a, a large expensive asset or possibly even clinical trials. You know, I mentioned earlier, tracking you know source materials through to um you know participants to find out whether something is, is effective or not and treating something uh, tracking documentation and certifications reporting on sustainability uh even using traceability to track you know whether you're uh, you whether you have a lean supply chain or not lean is uh, is a a method of thinking about removing waste in your supply chain so that you don't have errors, you don't have um, mistakes being made in, in, uh, in that context. And then, you know, even hazardous materials. So, so um, you know, moving things from uh, location A to location B and there's a certain way of moving it. So making sure that it's handled properly as you're moving it. So, so these are examples of different value chains that digital storytelling of those particular products and or services uh, is very useful in, in um, tracking the source, the destination. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how this actually works. So in a simple supply chain concept, if you look at this diagram, and I know it's busy, but if I break it down for you, in the top left-hand corner, if you look at inputs or upstream, you know, it's really tracking things from you know, either uh, raw materials, like it could be food or it could be, um, you know, steel or out of the ground, rare earth materials and or lumber. And that is um, harvested or cultivated and then moved and processed. And finally, it's produced into a final product in the middle, top middle. And that final product, at that point in time, you would tag it with a smart tag, which then you could track the movement of that product downstream. So where did it get shipped to? Who was the shipper? When did it arrive at a certain retail location? And then when did the consumer actually obtain it and consume it? And as you go from left to right, each one of these uh, different transformations creates an opportunity to gather information 
about that opportunity or that that transformation in terms of answering the who what where when and why answers and that information is scanned and automated from a data collection point of view so that we're gathering intelligence about the product's life cycle and, or service from its inception through to the final delivery and so not only are we tracking the goods through their life cycle but we're also tracking the data life cycle and building and, and uh in, increasing the visibility and transparency of that particular item or product so this is conceptually how the uh, blockchain helps us because the who what where when why information is recorded like in a blockchain and the scanning of those things are are done with iot devices or sensors that help us you know codify and track the life cycle and movement of you know raw materials to finished goods to you know to to the consumer and and how it works is is that most often supply chains are many different players there's there's different actors and it's it's uh, a case where they need to share data so where it really helps is that people that are producing the, like the, the raw materials and or processing it and then finally maybe extracting things or adding things to it and then finally distributing it each one of those um different activities or transformations they have their own internal uh supply chain so to speak or or value chain if you want to use that concept and then as they're moving th through the different stages and processing them in different groups we can share that data publicly across the different uh supplier groups or value network and that way we don't have to repeat or track data in these silos. And it can be audited and verified even by third parties as it moves through this. So those are the kind of the steps that uh, we can put on the supply chain in a blockchain format. And, and here's some examples of that. So this is like digital storytelling. And normally what we do is we break it down and say, well, who are the major actors and here's one as an example this is for wine and this is to you know have the uh, the the theme of where did it come from or the provenance and make sure it's not counterfeited because that in in good wines is is something that can happen quite extensively so you want to know what vineyard did it come from who was the winemaker what cellar was it aged in and you know when was it bottled and so each of these items has an opportunity to collect certain data that's important to to understand you know what skew number what field did it come from what was the varietal of the grape when was it fertilized when did it get harvested and then when it was being fermented you know what was the idea of the vat that it was in were there additives how you know what was the result of the testing when did it get processed and then when you're aging and storing you want to know what batch it was in what barrel it was in what cellar did it belong to what was the temperature and humidity and and when was it stored and then finally, when it when it's bottled, you want to know the date and the time and, and when things were bottled. Now, if you had your iPhone or your uh, mobile device, you could scan this QR code and actually see the results of this information, like on a landing page that talked. If I was to scan a particular bottle, I could see the history and the life of this particular item. I'm going to show you um, in an example here. Uh, I'm just going to flip over to a different screen and uh just give you an i con the context of what that looks like so if i take a bottle of wine and if i was to scan either a qr code or a chip on this i could see you know what what kind of is you know information about that when it was bottled um the vintage i could see information maybe about who the um the seller was that produced it and then i could see the traceability information about when the grape got harvested uh, what vineyard it came from, the you know the date and the time, who made the wine, how did they make it, uh, where was it aged, when was it aged, what barrel was it in, what was the average temperature uh, that it was aged in, and what what date did it get bottled, and maybe there was some awards that were you know third party uh, awards that were given to this wine. I can even track 
you know, who handled it? Where did it ship from? Uh, this is a demo, so you only see my location. Haha, <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> and um, when it was distributed and who bought it and, you know, I could track, you know, when it was sold and, I, you know, I can even put invoicing information or, or any kind of documentation in here for this. So, so these are, are examples of um, different types of information that can be tracked on the blockchain. And, and so that what you were looking at is actually a, it, it's demo data, but it really is on the blockchain and it's just a simulator that I put in place to show you if you scan this QR code, what you would see. Now you'll also notice to the right of that, you'll see something that, you know, is, is, is kind of red in nature and it's got two circles with a, a dash to it. This is actually a chip and it goes on top of a wine bottle and it's a, uh, it's got a sticky back. So it sticks to it and it's meant to be a, a um, an anti tamper proof item because it sticks to the wine bottle, but it is an intelligent chip, meaning that if you scan it with the right software on your iPhone, it can tell you the same information and look up this web page as well. And that chip has a, a cryptographically signed signature on it that you can't counterfeit it. So these are diff different techniques that you can use to, um, you know, manage the, the um, counterfeiting aspect. Of Here's another example. This is slightly different. This is more to do with traceability and safety. Uh, this one is more for cannabis products. And again, these are different products that are being tracked and traced. But uh, similar in nature, you want to know when something was cultivated and harvested and packaged and, you know, where it was delivered. And there are very rigorous um, tracking requirements for cannabis um, in, in different states or provinces in, in Canada. And, and so uh, it's important to, to know when and where things came from, not only from the uh, government's perspective, but as well for the consumer wanting to know where things are coming from and where they went to. So, so that's another example. And in addition to that, um, using the same data, we can also show compliance information and uh, government often has very rigorous reporting and they want to make sure that it, it is, um, you know, truthful and that you report on a regular basis how much was harvested, you know, how much uh, materials were sold. And so all of this information could also be tracked on, on, on blockchain as well. And one last example, a cold chain example, this is for logistics. And that is if you had things like, say, seafood, which you wanted to make sure it was fresh and that it was handled properly. So you want to know you know, when was it caught? What vessel or boat did it come from? Where was it caught? Um, the weight, the grade, uh, what batch and time did it get collected from the first producer? And then if it was repackaged or processed, uh, when did that happen? Where did it happen? And then was it stored ideally at a certain temperature uh, before it was delivered to the restaurant or, or whatever? And so these are different examples um, of tracking. So how does this all come together? Well, I mentioned very at the beginning that I'm a VChain partner, and uh, this is powered on their system called Toolchain. And Toolchain is a, it's like a blockchain as a service platform. And it comes with uh, easy to use proof of concepts in the notion of you can build a sandbox in minutes and test out pretty complex um, trials in, in a few days to a week and it's inexpensive and it helps you verify that uh, you, you get the right data and figure out how to track it and how do you put the right tracking chips or QR codes on it and when do you put them on. So it helps us work through those you know details, the, the niggly little details about how to um, codify and track your products and or services as it goes through this. And it uses the same simple concepts. It looks at the end to end supply chain, right from the source, you know, where did it come from? When was it harvested? Who were the vendors? You know, how did it get transported? When did it get processed? Maybe there's third parties also looking at it. And then eventually all of this information is available to the consumer when they scan it and, and be able to um, see how that all works. So how do you get started with this? We have uh, starter templates 
that are are by different industry uh, types. And so we've made this really easy because we've mixed the notion of true storyteller, which is the digital storytelling, with a templated approach that is subscription based, meaning you don't have any upfront costs, you just sign up for a subscription based on a theme. And then we help onboard you by training you how to use the system and even get you up and running so that you can track your first product and provide whatever sensors make sense for the type of products that you have and then provide ongoing support um, should you need it from us uh, going forward. So this is a quick and easy way to get you up and running. Uh, you know, it used to take, you know, months and months and a lot of money and investment to, to figure this stuff out. It's now very, very easy. Uh, VeChain has done a really good job of uh, making this simple and easy to use. And that's why uh, you hear about them quite often, um, you know, in the corporate space, tracking and tracing, you know, products and or services. So I have an offering here. If you want to try this out and get started, there is a trial. Um, here is the link to the trial. I think if you look in your um, in your Bright Talk uh, screen somewhere, you might even see a link to this. I hope so. But it's three easy steps. You know, register through this link with me an appointment, and I will walk you through uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and talk about your specific problems that you're trying to solve and then give you access to e-learning, which you can learn and onboard and, and get a trial. And that's a sandbox that we can set you up on the tool chain system. We've made it very uh, price attractive. So it's not free, but uh, it's pretty close to free. Uh, and so you can get a, a trial of this and then determine if this is right for you. And with that, um, this brings me to the conclusion here. And at this point in time, I'm going to check and see if we've got any questions. I see one here. And um, uh, um, if you have any other questions, now's your time to you know, type them into your chat box. But the first question that I have is, um, is this using the Helium network? And the answer is no, this is using VeChain. And VeChain is on the Thor network, VeChain Thor. And so they have their own blockchain. And that's the, um, the blockchain that, that uh, we're running on. And VeChain, as I said, has a, a blockchain as a service, which is called Toolchain. And it's the simple and easy to use um, system that you can craft the uh, your supply chain. It's very process oriented where you describe what the steps are and then what data is important to track for uh, for you or for your consumers. And then that information is codified, written on the blockchain and scannable by um, you know, scanning the different, uh, you know, products that you have, uh, either scanning the chips or scanning a QR code as, as an example. Okay. Uh, just while we're waiting here, I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of other items as well. Um, to see if any other questions come in. Uh, here are some other examples. Um, the one example that I had was all to do with, uh, tracking and tracing of um other products so here's one where we've got a cannabis product and it was tracked from uh the from a whole plant was sent from a lab for testing so you can kind of see the the transaction of that being sent over and uh here's another one here is uh reporting to you know same theme this is a cannabis facility and they needed to report to the government uh, monthly, you know, how much um, material they processed. So there's information about what they do and what um, what they processed, which then you can uh, click on the actual report. And of course, it's not going to work because I'm doing a demo. So forget that. But there is a report that is obtainable that you can get uh, stored in here. Last one, uh, this here was the example of the, of the seafood. And again, it was, you know, who is the company? When did they catch the fish? What boat caught it? Um, which company then did they process? 
the fish as it came off, who packed it, and then, you know, how did that get moved through wholesale and eventually onto an invoice that they, they tracked for somebody. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing. I've got another question that came in. And the question is, okay, how successful have you been with getting supplier adoption? This requires participation from suppliers, our partners, to buy into using the service we want to implement. Um, it, it starts usually with uh, one company and then they um, have to spread the word and get their suppliers involved. So it is getting adoption, but it is a slow process, but it, uh, it is successful. I'll give one example. I have uh, one customer who is more on the retail side. They distribute and sell products. Um, again, that are uh, easy to counterfeit. Uh, it's more to do with uh, vape products. And so vape products um, are, are, can be counterfeited and it's a, it's a huge, huge problem. And when they're counterfeited, there is a, a, a big safety issue uh, that they sometimes may substitute and put, you know, bad materials into the vape, which can, you know, hurt people. So it's very important to kind of get that under control. So their approach to get this started was more to do with education and educating their consumers as to the um, the quality of the product. And in doing so, they took the uh, product to the supplier of, or, or they they took th th this notion of of um, track and trace to their supplier. And the supplier then looked at it and said, "Wow, that's amazing! We need to be a part of this as well." And so now that supplier of this retailer is uh now looking at how can they get on board and track this as well so that's one example using vape products now, i'll use another example of uh wine industry napa valley is um a huge wine uh provider and uh they have very good quality products a big importer uh from that region is china imports a ton of wine and um Often there's opportunity along the way for people to counterfeit the wine. So uh, it's very important to know where that's coming from. So the, the uh, start point was with somebody that is a distributor and they are now uh, socializing this with other vineyards to get suppliers on board. So again, adoption, it, it's slow on the uptake, but it, it is happening. A lot of this is to do with education. It's like running these sessions and making sure people understand what's out there and uh, how um, how it uh, how it works. Okay, uh, another question I've got is, and the supplier also has to sign up. In this case, yes. Um, well, no, not necessarily, but um, would suggest yes. The the beauty of the way um, VChain is put this 